Hello everyone, my name is Healthy. Welcome to another International Sunday School lesson where we give an overview of the lessons based on the standard lesson commentary. Don't forget to like, to share, to subscribe, or even to leave a comment. This is the third lesson in Unit 3 of our winter quarter. We're still in that study of faith that pleases God. Bible scripture for today, Sunday, February 18, is taken from Daniel chapter 6, verses 10 and 11. Skip to verse 14 and 16. Skip to verse 19 and two, uh, through 23. And then 26 and 27. All the lessons in February is focusing on the righteous live by faith. Lesson title is Faith in time of trouble before we go into our lesson we will have prayer lord thank you thank you lord thank you for always being with us thank you that your word lets us know that you'll never leave us nor you will never forsake us help us lord to stay connected help us lord to stay so connected to you that when we face trials and situations and circumstances, we can feel your presence in times of trouble. Strengthens us, Lord, when we face these opposition, when we face these situations that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy us. Help us, Lord, and strengthens us to stand. Give us the courage that we need to stand and hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering knowing that we serve a God who is able that promise we serve a God who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think according to the power of your word that worketh in us. And we say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for every listening ears. Every person that listens, Lord, we ask that you will open up their ears to hear and their hearts to receive. Bless every teacher. Give strength. Give encouragement. And we say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all of your many blessings and all these things we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This lesson is outlined and it is divided into two sections. Section 1 will deal with violation and consequences. And that's Daniel 6, verse 10 and 11 and skip to 14 and 16. Section 2. Two will deals with release and vindication, and that's verses 19 through a 23, and then 26 and 27. Before we go into our printed text, we'll just add a little bit of background. And so this is the second lesson from the book of Daniel. And in our last lesson, uh, the focus was on uh, Daniel's uh, friend, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And that uh, was in chapter 3. And we saw back then how uh, these three uh, men, how they uh, were determined. They were determined to stand and not to bow to Nebuchadnezzar's idol. Nebuchadnezzar's uh, golden image. We saw how uh, they stood their ground and believed that their God would save them them no matter what. We even learn of Daniel's uh, stand when he also stood his ground back in chapter 1 and made up in his mind, purposing, purposing in his heart that he was not going to defile himself going against a God and, and we saw his stand, purposing in his heart to stand on the word of God to stand on what he believed about his God and he was not going to defile his body when we get here to our uh, chapter 6 several things happen along the way uh, King Nebuchadnezzar he had a dream and only Daniel could explain that dream and uh, Nebuchadnezzar he was so impressed with uh, Daniel's ability uh, to explain that dream it causes him to worship uh, the, the most high God. 
it causes him to acknowledge the Most High God. He may not believe, but it causes him to praise and worship the Most High God. And uh, as we get to uh, chapter 5, uh, there's a new empire replacing the Babylonians. And this would be the Persian uh, Empire. And this new king would be uh, King Darius. And King Darius uh, was uh, using God's holy utensils to a party and to disrespect uh, God's utensils. And the Lord put a writing on the wall. And again, they had to go get Daniel to explain what the writing on the wall was. And Daniel, I let them know, let this king I know that you have defiled the Lord, the Holy One of Heaven. You have defiled him and have uh, his cups and, and all the utensils brought uh, from the temple before you and you have defiled it. And you will pay for it using uh, the God's holy uh, utensils to praise idol gods. You will pay for it. And again, uh, because Daniel uh, was able to explain the writing on the wall of uh, the king, uh, he gave uh, Daniel promotion. He promoted uh, Daniel, dressed him up in a purple robe and proclaim him to be the highest ruler in the kingdom. So, let's think about it. How do you think that kind of promotion would make the other supervisors and administrators and all those who were in a high authority? How do you think that kind of promotion makes them feel? Uh-huh. Leading up to our lesson, our lesson picks up in verse 10. But if we start looking at verse 3, it says, Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because of his excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole kingdom. Verse 4, then the presidents and princes sought to find accusation against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could, couldn't could find none accusation nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error of fault found in him. So again, what do you think? It would uh, cause them to do, yep, the spirit of jealousy we see here in action. They're looking, they're going looking for stuff to accuse him. They can't find nothing because Daniel was faithful to the Lord. So what do they do? Go looking for stuff to accuse him. And you know, verse 5 also lets us know uh, the faithfulness of Daniel, not only to God, but to his job. Daniel was faithful all around. Verse 5, then said the, these men, we shall not find any accusation against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Did you hear that? Verse 6, then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said, thus, unto him, King Darius, live forever. Seven, all the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, the princes, the counselors, and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statue and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any other god or man for 30 days, say, Save of you, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. And so you see, see what hap what's happening here? They couldn't find anything to accuse him of. So what did they do? Yep, they attacked his religion. Verse 8. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign 
the writing that it will not change according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which alters not. Nine, wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Here we see how uh, these officials, how they uh, talked uh, Darius into signing that decree because they knew that not even Darius could change it after he signed it. That's how bad they wanted to get rid of Daniel. But Daniel had a ram in the bush. Daniel had his prior life. Daniel was connected to the lifeline. He had his prior connected to his God. We will now go to section one. It will deal with violation and consequences. Verse 10. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open to his chamber towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. And we see here how a Daniel from earlier, how he purposed in his heart. Daniel purposed in his heart and in his mind to stand his ground. And although he knew about uh, the law against praying to anyone except uh, the king, he continued to pray three times a day as he always had. And what uh, does that say about uh, Daniel's uh, prayer life? Well, for one, we can see that he had a disciplined prior life. And we have to uh, think in that same manner that our prior life also, we have to be disciplined in our priors because prior is our lifeline to God. Verse 11, then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supp supplication before his God. See, they're not giving up. They're following him even to his house to see what he was doing. But Daniel was ac acknowledging his God. If we take a look at Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs uh, chapter 3 and start looking at verse 5. We are encouraged. Verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Six, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. While these men were following uh, Daniel around, trying to uh, catch him into doing something unlawful, what was Daniel doing? Yep, Daniel was praying to his God. Daniel was trusting and depending on his God to save him out of this dilemma. Daniel uh, was in a place where only the Lord could help him. The king couldn't help him because the king already signed off on this decree. So only the Lord could help him. And you know, every now and then we'll find ourselves in these places, these hard places between these, these the, the, the Red Sea and the, the Pharaoh's army behind us. We'll find ourselves in those hard places where we have no other choice but to look up to the Lord for our rescue. Verse 14, then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. And what uh, did the king heard? Well, the little spies went back and told him in verse 13, uh, uh, 13 uh, then they told the king that uh, Daniel was uh, praying. Daniel was paying no attention uh, to his law. He was still uh, praying to his God three times a day. 
And of course, hearing this would uh, cause the king to be um, upset with himself because he'd know what he did and he'd know what the consequences of what he did would be. But Daniel was connected to his lifeline. He was connected to his God in prior. And when we talk about prior, you know, prior is that communication, the way of communicating with the Lord to cast our cares on the Lord, to acknowledge the Lord in all our ways, to give it to the Lord. And who is our perfect example in praying? Yep, Jesus himself. In a Luke chapter a 5 and verse 16, it says, And he, meaning Jesus, withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. If, you know, if Jesus had to pray and always was always praying, what about us? We also learn in a John chapter 12, verse 49, that Jesus, he did not just pray, but he prayed what his father uh, given him to say. Verse 49, John 12, 49. For I have not spoken of myself, but the father which sent me, he gave me a commandment what I should say and what I should speak. Did you hear that? Jesus was always uh, connected to his father. He was always saying what his father uh, gives him to say because he and the father is one. Daniel was in oneness with God. He knew that God was his lifeline prior Prior, 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 we must pray. We must always pray because prior is a way that we stay connected to the Lord. Back to the lesson, verse 16. Then the king commanded and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And if we notice here that uh, the king, he noticed Daniel's faithfulness to his God. He said to the God whom thou servest continually by a serving the Lord, Daniel, by him serving of the Lord consistently, continually, faithfully. Here, uh, Darius was able to see it. Daniel had demonstrated his faithful a devotion to the Lord and it was seen uh, you know it's not like a uh, back with his friends where uh, Nebuchadnezzar was on a whole different page here uh, King Darius he responded with compassion whereas uh, Nebuchadnezzar uh, he was all out for evil you know this is why no matter where we find ourselves we should continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand no matter where we find ourselves. We should not allow uh, the pressure of this world to cause us to give up. We should never give up. We should never quit. You know, this world, unbelievers, they know nothing about the power of the God that we serve because this God that we serve, he can even shut the lion's mouth. We will now go to section two. It will deals with release and vindication. Verse 19. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. 20. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lament voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? And just by uh, the king rising early in the morning, uh, we see that urgency. It, it re reveals his urgency and his distress regarding uh, Daniel's uh, faith. And the king, uh, he, he knew enough that the only way, the only way Daniel could survive uh, being uh, shut up in that lion's den was if God intervened on his side. 
and again uh, we see how uh, just by how uh, the king called for Daniel it also revealed that the king understood the one true God Daniel's God he understood that uh, this God was the one and only true God and uh, the only God that could get Daniel out of this den alive everything was outside of Daniel's control but not outside of God's control and again you know same is true for us when we find ourselves in these hard places we have to make sure that we're holding a fast to the profession of our faith without wavering knowing that this God that we serve is faithful because he promised no matter what uh, the enemy what they put in our way the Lord is able to make our crooked path straight the Lord is able to deliver us from all evil that's that's why we should fret not ourselves over evil doors God is able to deliver us from them we just have to stay focused like Daniel he's teaching us something here Daniel stayed focused he was devoted he was consistent he was faithful to his God and we're seeing right here how God came to his rescue because he stayed connected to him by faith 21 then said Daniel unto the king O king live forever 22 my God had sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me for so as so much as before uh, him innocence was found in me and also before thee O king have I done no hurt 23 then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den so Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God release and vindication who who can stand against the mighty power of Almighty God who if God is for us he is more than the world against us who no one like Daniel uh, when we trust in the Lord and obey his commandments obey his will he will cover us under his shadow Psalms 91 lets us know that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide it under the shadow of the Almighty and because we are covered under his shadow we can say he is my refuge and my fortress and my God in him will I trust and the psalmist goes on to say in verse 3 surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence just like we see he's doing here with Daniel when we abide when we stay connected as again Daniel was connected to him so Daniel was able to walk in confidence that God was going to rescue him back to the lesson verse 26 I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men trembled and fear before uh, the God of Daniel for he is the living God and steadfast forever and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall be even unto the end verse 27 he delivered and rescued and he worked signs and wonders in heaven and in earth who had delivered Daniel from the power of of the lions did you hear that did you hear this decree this is coming from the king we see here how uh, this king uh, was convinced of the power of Daniel's God and even a uh, back with uh, Nebuchadnezzar he had also come to believe that the Israel's God was the real God because of the faithfulness of not only Daniel but the faithfulness of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego 
they were faithful and they stood their ground and they sent a message that we, we will not be moved. We're standing on the God that we believe in, the one and only true and living God. We see uh, when, we, when we stand our ground on what we believe about our God, he will vindicate us. We see it right here. Because Daniel was faithful to the Lord, he rescued him. And because of Daniel's faithfulness to the Lord, his testimony, Daniel had a testimony to the powerful, sovereign a power of his God. And, and the question now becomes, as, as Christians, what message are we sending about the power of our sovereign God. How do we react to situations and circumstances? Because it will determine the power of our God. People will see us. They pretend like they're not watching, but they watch. Just like those uh, men was watching uh, Daniel to see what he was doing. People watch. They watch us to see how we're acting and, and watch to see how we react to situations and circumstances. And the way we react to our situations and our circumstances will send a message of the power of the God that we're serving. Our, our life down here on earth as Christians is a testimony to the power of Almighty God. When we walk in that faithfulness to the Lord, he can use us to make an impact on others. He can use us to transform lives. When they see how the Lord is moving in our lives and how we're trusting on, on him and depending on him to make our crooked path straight, we will become a testimony to them and that will point them to Christ. It will, it, he will use us to be that pointer to point them to Christ. And so as we close, uh, what can we learn from the account of Daniel in the lion's den? Daniel uh, was faithful to the Lord. And we see a God's a sovereignty. We see his sovereign power moving in Daniel's uh, life. We see that uh, the Lord is perfect in all his ways. We may not understand it, but the Lord is perfect in all his ways. And because of the Lord's ways are perfect, we can trust that whatever he does and whatever he allows, it's perfect. We may not understand the ways of the Lord, but nevertheless, our responsibility is to trust and obey. Stay faithful no matter what. Like Daniel, submit to whatever he allows. Believe that whatever he ordains in our lives, it is designed to bring him glory. Remember what Jesus said in, in John 17 and verse 1. Jesus said this, these words spoke Jesus. And lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify your son, that your son also may glorify you. And, you know, Jesus spent a lot of time in this chapter right here praying. Praying uh, for his disciples. Uh, praying that God would keep uh, his chosen believers safe from Satan's power. Prior. Praying. That God I would set them apart. That God would keep them pure and keep them holy. And uniting them as one through faith. We see in this uh, a lesson with Daniel. Prior was his lifeline. Prior. And Daniel he also teaches us that if we follow the Lord. He will fight our battles for us. No matter what happened. Or where we find ourselves, never give up. Never quit. Pray and trust in the Lord to intercede on our behalf. 
when uh, it seems that all was lost for Daniel, he continued to pray and to trust the Lord to defend him. Daniel uh, teaches us here that only God can do the impossible. Question, what personal lion's den are you facing today? And how are you planning on getting out of it? We only have one way out, and that is believing and trusting uh, the Lord to see us through it until he releases us from it. Daniel had to go through it before God releases him from it. However, Daniel stayed faithful. That's the key word, staying faithful, staying connected, staying consistent with uh, the hope that God will deliver us no matter where we find ourselves. And so as we go through this week, let us have an aim to keep our prior line open because it is our lifeline to the Lord. Let us have an aim to be a witness of the sovereign power of our God let us have an aim to be a witness that no power can stand against the power and purpose of our Almighty God. And this will conclude our lesson. If you have heard something that was helpful to you, please uh, give a like, share, subscribe, or even to leave a comment. But most importantly, remember, we are building the kingdom of God together one lesson at a time. God bless you. Until next time. Bye-bye.